sometimes the old stuff can be kind of dope too. What's good, Power Director peeps? Another Saturday is upon us, and today I'm going to show you how to make the old school Tonight Show intro using Power Director 18. If you've been wondering how to make a PIP move across a background, I want you to put hashtag moving PIP in the comment section below. Here we are in Power Director 18. If you have a talk show for your channel, making a talk show intro which gives your audience an idea of what your content is all about is a great way to keep them engaged and watch it for more. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a talk show intro for your videos. Let's slide on into some talk show drama. As you can see, I have multiple clips in the timeline. Track one is a picture that's being used as the background. So all you really need to do is find your background picture, left click on it, drag it down to the timeline where you want it to be. And once you get it down here, if you left click on it, you can go ahead and select duration. You can left click on that. You can change the duration of what you want it to be for this tutorial example you want to use 30 seconds and then you can click on ok and it'll change the duration to 30 seconds now track two actually has a title on it so if we click on this you can see the title on screen and if you go to your title room you can select from different templates you use as your title i use the default one you just want to drag that down to your timeline once you get that down into the timeline you can just double click on it and it'll open up the title designer. From here, you can change your font. I used uh, Times New Roman. And then for the top portion of the letters, I used these colors here. If you want to, you can copy the hue, saturation, or luminance that I used, or the RGB channels that I used to place them in. And then once you go ahead and type in those parameters, you can go ahead and click on OK. And then for the bottom letters here, if you can highlight those, you can make them a different color if you want. If you want to follow along with the colors that I used, here are the hue, saturation, and luminance that I used, and the RGB that I used. Either one, you don't have to do both, just do either the RGB or the hue, saturation, and luminance, and then go ahead and click on OK. So then you have your font set up. And then I also went ahead and added a shadow. I just went ahead and clicked on the shadow button and it went ahead and added the defaults for distance of a three and an opacity was at a hundred, the fill is black. So you have that. Once you go ahead and get those things done, you wanna make sure that you add in your effect that you wanna use. So the effect as you saw at the beginning for this one was the actual title of uh, spinning. So if you click on the effect tab and you go to starting effect, can scroll down until you find the flip effect. So this makes it the letters flip around or turn in space. And then you want to make sure that you change the effect duration. So you go ahead and place your cursor over this line here for the starting effect. Hold down your left mouse and you can drag this to a specific time. So for this one, I used a what was it seven seconds in because I know that my first clip comes in at 10 seconds in. And if I do seven seconds and I know for sure that it'll go ahead and stop spinning at seven seconds, it'll give me three more seconds to be stable and still before any of those images start sliding across the screen. So once you go ahead and pick your effect that you wanted to start off with and you set the timing, you can go ahead and click on okay. So that gives you what you need to know for the background and for the title. So this makes the beginning of the effect look like this. And it'll stop spinning. And then I have all these other clips on the timeline. So right now, all that's really gonna happen is when these clips show up, they're gonna be full screen. They're not gonna be uh, PIPs or picture in pictures sliding across the screen. So if I click play again, there you go. You just see different images on the screen. So the rest of these clips on the screen, we actually have them spaced out how we want them to appear and when we want them to appear and for what duration. So for this clip, if I hover over it, you can see that I started it at 10 seconds and it ends at 16 seconds. And then the duration is six seconds. 
So all of these here, the duration is going to be six seconds. And they all start one second before the other clip stops. So if this one stops at 16 seconds, this one's going to start at 15 seconds. So you can see that information there. And if this one stops at 21 seconds, this one's going to start at 20 seconds. All right. So these two tracks, track three and track four, are basically going to be used for the top row of images that slide across the screen. And they're all spaced out. They're all six seconds long. And each one starts a second before the other one stops. So you want to use that as an example of how you're going to do it. So for track five and track six, they do exactly the same thing, except these are five seconds long. And I started this one kind of like in the middle of this one so that they don't overlap too much. And you can move these around, make them however many seconds apart you want, but you can see the same example um, here that this one starts at 13 seconds, ends at 18, and it's five seconds long. So this one will start at 17 seconds because it starts a second before the other one stops. It's also five seconds long, and it stops at 22 seconds. So this one will start at 21 seconds, and it'll be five seconds long. And these two tracks, track five and track six, make up the bottom row that's going to be sliding across. And you'll see everything in a few seconds when I get to making these changes. And then for this bottom one, this is the one that comes onto the screen, slides into the middle position and zooms in. So that's what we're going to do with this one. Uh, we just basically have it coming in uh, at 24 seconds and going all the way out to the end. So it's six seconds long because this whole thing is 30 seconds. So this comes in at 24 seconds. So it's six seconds long. And this one we're going to do separately. So let's go ahead and make these bad boys go across the screen. But before we do that, I want to remind you to subscribe to Power Director University and click on the bell to get notifications every time I upload content to YouTube. And don't forget to follow PDU Tutorials on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for even more Power Director love. Now, let's get back to the breathtaking tutorial. So to get these bad boys sliding across the screen, we're going to go to the first clip here and you can either hit F2 on your keyboard, you can double click on this clip, or you can go to designer and then go to PIP designer. Now when this opens up, the first thing that we want to do is scale this down to size to serve as a PIP. So I'm going to scale this down to a number that I want. You might need to use these little sliders to scale it down to whatever size you want. It's all good. Right now you see what parameters I use. If you want to copy me, go ahead and do that. Next thing you want to do is go up to your Y position and you want to make sure that you get it to a position where you want it um, to be vertically. So I'm going to do uh, move it up right about there, which looks good to me. And then we want to go ahead and move the position for the X position, the horizontal, we want it to move off the screen all the way to the left. So we're going to do negative 0 0.3 and hit enter and it'll move it off the screen. You can still see it a little bit there poking out, but it's no longer in the visible area. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we want to add a border to this. So we're going to scroll down to border and I'm going to enable that. And we want a two color gradient. So we're going to go to fill type and we're going to select two color gradient. And in the begin with color, which will be on the top, because this is the gradient direction from top down. If we double click on that, we can type in the parameters we want. And this is what I'm going to use for the top. This is the same color that the top text is that you saw before. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And then for the ends width color, we want it to be the same color as the text on the bottom. And so we're good with that. The next thing that you want to do is add a shadow. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on the box for shadow. Uh, if you want to change the parameters, you can. 
I'm just going to leave them at the default like I did before with the text. And now we want to go back up to the top and we want to go back to the position. We want to make sure that our playhead is all the way at the beginning of our track. So make sure it's all the way over to the left. And then we want to go ahead and enable keyframes. You can enable the keyframes from here or from down here. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to click on the one down here and it's going to enable keyframes. So it's locked into the position of off the screen and up a little bit where we started off. And now what we want to do is move our playhead all the way to the end. And then we want to change the X position to a position where it'll be off the screen to the right. If we do that, then it'll slide from left to right. It'll start off all the way on the left for that first keyframe is. And at the end where we're going to add another keyframe, it'll be all the way off to the right. So here we're going to do 1.3 and hit enter. And you see it jumped all the way over to the right. So now if I move my playhead all the way back and I click on play, you'll see that this is going to go across the screen. Now you couldn't see it go all the way across the screen because the other tracks have images on them that are covering it up and overlaying it, but you get the picture. So I'm going to go ahead and click on stop. And now I'm going to click on okay. Now you can do what I just did for these other two clips if you want to, or you can go the easy route, which is what I'm about to show you here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this clip. I'm going to go to copy keyframe attributes. Then I'm going to highlight these two clips. I'm going to left click, hold down my left mouse and create a box around these two clips. Then I'm going to right click on one of them and do paste keyframe attributes. It's going to ask me if I'm okay with that. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to click on OK. And now what it did is it just changed the movement that I created for this first clip and added it to these two so I didn't have to do all of that over again. Now, it does not move over the border and the shadows, so I have to go back and add those in. So now we need to do the same thing for the next set of clips, but instead of having them sliding across the top, we want to have them closer to the bottom. So I'm going to go to this first clip. Let's go ahead and move this down a little bit. I'm going to double click on it to open up the PIP designer. For the Y position, this time I'm going to change this. Well, let's do the scale first. And then for the Y position, we want to move it down. So we'll be right there. And then for the X position, we want to move this off the screen. And the rest of it's the same. So you know the routine. So we'll go ahead and click on OK. And just like we did with the top set, we're going to right click this one, copy keyframe attributes. We're going to select these two. We'll right click one of them, paste keyframe attributes. We'll click on OK. And then we need to add the border and the shadows. So now if we play this back, you get a pretty good idea of how everything is going to be looking. All right. We got one more clip here. And that's this clip. So for the last clip, we wanted to slide into the middle and then zoom in to full screen. 
that might be like you talking about the daily episode or whatever you wanted to kick off with. We just got a jogger in here. So pretty much the same with a little bit of a twist on it. So I'm going to double click on this one to open up the PIP designer. We're going to change the scale to match all of the other ones. And we're going to go ahead and leave our Y position right in the middle. We're not going to change the Y, but for the X, we're going to move it all the way over to the left again. So we're going to go negative 0 0.3 and we're good to go there. Now we need to do our border. And we need to add our shadow. Now we'll go back up to the top. And what we're going to do first is we're going to enable a position keyframe and a scale keyframe. Now we're going to move our playhead to a position where we want to have this in the middle of the screen. So let's go to about 212. Here should be good. And now at this position, we want to go ahead and change our X position to 0 0.5 and hit enter. And that'll make it slide right to the middle of the screen. Now we want to have our scale keyframe to stay the same here. So we're going to add another scale keyframe so that it stays the same scale up to that point. We don't want it, the scale to change before that, but we do want the scale to change about a second later. So we're going to move our playhead to one second after this, which should be 312. We'll add a scale keyframe here and we'll change our scale to one and hit enter. And so now if we play this back, we should see it slide to the middle and then get large. And it should stay at that size all the way out to the end. Let's go ahead and click on OK. And now if we hit our home key, we can play this back and see what it looks like. And that's how you make a talk show intro using PowerDirector 18. If you decide that you like PowerDirector 18 and you want to buy or upgrade to the software or purchase a 365 annual subscription, I'll leave some links in the video description. Don't forget to drop me a comment and a like down below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.